on today's Healthy Living, step-by-step -step instructions on how to make two healthy and tasty meals, plus ending food deserts. Find out what local youngsters are doing to make fresh fruits and vegetables more accessible. We'll have those stories and more on this edition of Healthy Living. Welcome to Healthy Living, I'm Priscilla Ortega. One of Fulton's strategic goals is to make sure all people are healthy. So on the Healthy Living Show, we will always show how the county is helping residents to be healthy. And this edition is all about eating properly. Now, according to the American Heart Association, an overall healthy diet emphasizes a variety of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, low-fat dairy products, skinless poultry and fish, as well as nuts. Now, cooking healthy meals does not have to take a lot of time. In fact, the Healthy Heart Coalition of Fulton County partnered with the Atlanta Community Food Bank to demonstrate how quickly healthy meals can be made. Take a look. Welcome to the Healthy Heart Second Decade Cooking Show. On today's segment, we will be making a wonderful zucchini dish with peppers and also a dish with garlic lemon kale saute. We're excited to be here today. My name is Cornelia King with the Healthy Heart Coalition. And I'm Joy Getz with the Atlanta Community Food Bank and we are here in our beautiful new learning kitchen. We are so excited to have our friends and members from the Tabernacle of Praise, Church International in McDonough, Georgia with Miss Vivian Crowley and they're members of the Healthy Heart Coalition. In our recipe today, we have olive oil, onions, garlic, red pepper, zucchini, corn, sea salt, and we also have black pepper. In a skillet with hot oil over medium, high heat, add your ingredients, which will be the onion saute for five minutes, add the garlic and saute for two minutes, add the zucchini and saute for three to four minutes, and season with salt and black pepper. And now we're going to show you how to prepare it. So this is a quick and easy recipe that adds a lot of color to any plate. And all of the different colors represent different nutrients that our body needs. And it's great to get as many colors on your plate as you can every day. Peppers, onions, and garlic that are used in this dish are some of the most flavorful vegetables there are. We call them our aromatic vegetables. And they help to add a lot of flavor to recipes so that you don't have to add quite so much salt. There's also a little bit of evidence that suggests that eating garlic every day can help to reduce high blood pressure. Uh, this recipe calls for all fresh vegetables, but you could certainly use frozen peppers or frozen corn. Uh, they are just as nutritious as fresh, but have the convenience of already being ready to go. And in addition, you could use canned corn if you wanted to, but just make sure that you look for no salt added on the front of the can. We prepared our recipe ahead of time, and this is what it should look like at the end. We have switched up our ingredients, and we brought out the ingredients for our next recipe, which is a new lemon garlic kale saute. We have olive oil, kale, garlic cloves, crushed red pepper flakes, lemon sauce, lemon juice, kosher salt, and black pepper. In order to make this recipe in a Dutch oven, you want to heat the oil over low on a high medium heat. You want to add your kale saute and saute it for 46 minutes until it's simmering or wilted. You want to add garlic and the red crushed pepper and you want to cover it and cook for four to eight minutes until the kale is tender. Uncover and cook until the liquid evaporates about one to three minutes. Add the lemon sauce, the lemon juice, salt, black pepper, and serve with lemon wedges. Well, while she's preparing the recipe, I just want to talk a little bit about the nutritional content of this particular recipe. All of the ingredients used in this dish have heart health benefits. So first, let's talk about the olive oil. We're using olive oil in this dish because as a general rule of thumb, healthy fats come from plants and they are liquid at room temperature. Uh, on, in contrast to that, uh, unhealthy fats tend to be saturated in trans fats and they usually come from animal products and they are solid at room temperature. 
If you're using a unsaturated liquid fat to replace solid fats in your diet, you can actually help to reduce your risk for heart disease and lower your LDL cholesterol or your bad cholesterol. Now, kale is actually one of my favorite vegetables. It's fantastic raw in a salad, sauteed uh, in this kind of a dish, or even blended up in a smoothie. It's a wonderful source of fiber, vitamins A, C, and K, as well as folate. A great thing about this recipe is that healthy fats in the olive oil help your body to absorb some of the nutrients in the kale a little bit better. Thank you for joining us today. We also like to remind that the American Heart Association reminds us that heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. In order to um, join our efforts, please call 404-272-4286. And you can also contact us through our email, C-O-R-N-E-L-K-I, the number eight, at gmail.com. Well, thank you, ladies. Up next, whether it's apples or vegetables, canning is a way to preserve produce for about a year. Up next, we'll show you how to get started. Welcome back to the Healthy Living Show. Well, whether it's apples or peaches, canning fruit is a delicious way to extend the life of your fresh fruits. But how do you get started making preserves, jams, and jellies? Healthy Living's Minya Chester shows you how. Hi, my name is Minya Chester, and I am the director of Fulton County Cooperative Extension. Today, we're gonna to talk about apples and what can you do with all those apples that you get from the apple orchards or from your local farmer's market. We have several kinds of apples here today. We have your traditional Granny Smith apple, which is kind of tart. No, it's really very tart, and it's very crunchy. We have a Jonah Gold apple here. We have several types of Jonah Gold. This one is very, very sweet. It's very juicy, but not so crunchy. And the beloved Fuji apple. Everybody loves this very sweet, and crunchy apple. This is one of those apples you can put in your lunch bag and eat it every day. Then we have another type of apple. It is a St. John's apple and it is not so crunchy. Excuse me, it is very crunchy, not so sweet, very, very juicy. So if you like an apple that's not so sweet, this one is for you. These are all very good cooking apples. They're very good for canning as well. As you can see on our table here, we've made several things with the apples. And I'd like to talk with you about um, the different ways to can things that you are um, trying to preserve. There are different kinds of canners that you can use and they are used for different things. Today I'm going to show you three different ones. This is a pressure canner. Some people try to call it a pressure cooker, but it is really used for canning. You should not be cooking in this. This is a boiling water canner, one that um, is just a, a stainless steel pot with a lid on it, and this is another type of boiling water canner with an insert. I will show you what each of them looks like inside. This is actually a weighted gauge pressure canner. This is the weighted gauge, and each recipe has different weights of pressure that should be put on it. This one has five, 10, and 15 pounds of pressure that you can put on it, and when it's cooking, I can put this on here. When it's cooking, it sounds just like this as it's coming up to pressure. The things that you would make in a pressure canner are low acid foods. Low acid foods include string beans. This is just string beans and water. These are carrots. Carrots and water, just like you would get in a can from the grocery store. You do not want to use a boiling water canner with these because you want to make sure that you get all the microbes, uh, make sure that all the microbes are dead, and then you want to also make sure that the pressure that you're using is appropriate for, for canning this, and you cannot control that with a boiling water canner. This other boiling water canner that we have here is what you would typically get from a store. And I'm going to take the lid off of this one, and inside, we have a jar lifter. And this jar lifter is used to help protect you from getting burned or anything like that. So when you put your 
jar lifter in, you want to make sure that your jars go in. Or if there is water, hot water in there already, you want to use your handy dandy jar lifter tool and place it in the canner. You don't want to put too many inside because you can have um, the jars bump up against each other and the jars could break and then you'll have a mess inside. If you are using this type of jar, excuse me, of this type of canner, you cannot use this on a flat top range. If you were to use this on a flat top range, it has ridges on it and it may not get hot enough and it may not come up to the temperature of boiling that you would need. It, does, it will not come into contact with the range as it should. It should be smooth on the bottom. So that's why you could use just a stainless steel pot that you have and make sure that it, it is deep enough for the water to come above the jar at least an inch or two. We talked about what you should do in, with your pressure can and the things that you should can with that. Now let's talk about our boiling water canners. People love apple butter and apple jelly. I made some apple jelly this past weekend, excuse me, some apple butter this weekend and some apple jelly. This apple jelly was made with filtered apple juice and this apple jelly was made with unfiltered apple juice. As you can see, um, they're both the same and unfiltered apple juice is just simply apple cider. These are high acid foods and they have lots of sugar in them of course, but um, you can use these in a boiling water canner and you will process them for only five minutes. Other things that you can make in your boiling water canner are um, green bean pickles or any kind of pickles, lots of vinegar in here, um, and then also tomatoes. These are canned tomatoes and they have acid in them, in them as well. When you are canning things, sometimes you may have a leftover. Leftover remnants are awesome, but you cannot process these to um, save them for a year or so. What you need to do is just put them in a jar, put them in a container, put them in the refrigerator, and enjoy them with your family. Or this is just a way that you can actually taste the things that you've made um, without opening a jar. In addition to your canners, there are other tools that you will need in order to um, prepare your foods properly. You will definitely need a jar lifter so that you can place your jars into boiling water safely. You will also need a canning funnel to ensure that your, the jars are clean and that you are not putting too much of your prepared foods inside a jar. The other things you will need are pectin if you are using things that will turn brown, such as your apples. There are different kinds of pectin that you can use. You will need some sort of um, sure gel to make sure that your jellies gel properly. And that leads me to my next thing. You may have problems with your jelly not gelling properly, and it may come like this. It may look like syrup when you're done with it. When that happens, you can try it again. You can put more pectin in your recipe um, when you are preparing it. You can open the jar, try it again. And if that doesn't work, then you will have excellent syrup to use on your pancakes the next time you have pancakes, but it can be eaten. Other problems include water not coming over your apples or your syrup pack that you're using not coming over your apples. You cannot store it this way. You would have to eat these immediately. Um, these are canned about a year ago and the water was not over it. Although there is not any uh, molding or anything in here, the water was not over it properly and they are not safe to eat. You also need jars, different size jars. Um, this one is a half pint and it comes with a, li a lid and a screw top. You cannot use these more than once, but you can use your screw lid more than once. Once again, you cannot use these more than once, but you can use your screw lid more than once. Also, you need your tested recipes from our handy dandy So Easy to Preserve book. This book was written by a specialist at the University of Georgia who also writes the recipes for the United States Department of Agriculture. For more information on canning, how to can, what to can, please contact your Cooperative Extension Office at 404-332-2400. Thanks for watching.
Thank you, Minya. We'll see you a little later in the show. Up next, how much starch, protein, and vegetables should be on your plate? We'll have the answer when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Healthy Living. Well, according to researchers, high blood pressure and heart disease are just some of the side effects of a poor diet. And researchers from Emory University School of Medicine say a poor diet can also affect your brain. Now here are some tips to lower your risk of hypertension from Emory University's Elizabeth Sitek. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Sitek and I'm here from Emory University to tell you a little bit about um, hypertension risks and how our diet affects our hearts and our brains. I work with the B-Sharp program. It's Brain Stress Hypertension and Aging Research Program. Hypertension risks include smoking, being overweight, diets high in salt and fat, drinking alcohol excessively, stress, high cholesterol, diabetes, and physical inactivity. What can we do each day to help prevent these risks? Take action. Do something you enjoy each day to reduce stress. Get moving. Aerobic activity is a great way to help our bodies. Eating eight to 10 servings of fruit and vegetables each day is also another good way to get healthier and prevent hypertension. Be positive and take small steps in the right direction. We don't expect you to make these huge changes all of a sudden, so each step in the right direction is a great way to reduce these risks. What to eat. Um, starting with a balanced plate, a quarter starch, a quarter protein, eating two to three servings of low-fat dairy each day, reducing sodium to 1,500 to 2,400 milligrams a day, always read the labels, and eating fewer calories, less fat, and smaller portions. Next time we're going to go into more detail about hypertension risks and what we can do to prevent them. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Elizabeth. Now, while some people can quickly get to a grocery store to find fresh fruits and vegetables, many others cannot because their journey is a lot farther. Now, those areas are called food deserts. When a group of elementary school children learned about food deserts, they reached out to our Cooperative Extension Office to find out what they can do to fix it. Minya Chester is back with this story. Today we're at Drew Charter Elementary School and we're about to go inside and see their projects that they're doing on food deserts. We are here to talk about the Fulton Fresh Mobile Farmers Market and as a part of their science, technology, engineering and math program, their STEM program, they are learning about food deserts and their project is how can we feed a neighborhood in need. They selected the Fulton Fresh Mobile Farmers Market to learn more about, um, and they were very, very excited that um, a girl was actually running the program. So when I came out to see them, they were very excited. In this program, they are learning about the lack of grocery stores, the lack of access to fresh fruit and vegetables. They are also learning about creating solutions to the problems as well. Their solutions range from bringing in grocery stores to bringing in farmers markets. They went to different grocery stores to learn more about them and we're going to see um, the projects. There are 170 students that actually participated in this and so um, you'll see quite a few projects here. They also talked about growing their own fresh fruit and vegetables. So on this side, we see that some of them went to um, fast food restaurants, they went to convenience stores, they went to grocery stores, and they asked the store managers questions um, as to how they can do a better job. And on the other side of the wall, you'll see over here, they actually learned how to grow their own fresh fruit and vegetables. So they have um, little gardens here and um, there's a lot of meth in gardening. People don't think about it, but you can measure how much your um, vegetables are growing every day. There's lots of things in there. In their projects, they asked questions um, of their parents as well. They wanted to know if they lived in a food desert, so they had a couple of questions. Um, the closest food retailer to their home, um, are there fresh fruit 
and um, vegetable options in their neighborhood. So they had all kinds of different things. And they said, is your, the last question was, is your community a food desert? And um, one of this answer says, no, I can walk. Um, and so they have different ways of learning about food deserts and even if they live in a food desert. As you can see this project has several components and one of the components is a pond that they created for people who are coming into the school they want them to learn about food deserts as well so they created their own little fishing pole here and the way that this works is this is the green part and this is their pond so you fish for one of their fishies here and on the back is information about a food desert and um, you pick this up and on the back it tells you what what it what could be a part of a food desert and, and it says a convenience store that has limited things in it so most of the time in a food desert the convenience stores don't have a lot of fresh fruit and vegetables in them and this is what they're trying to teach you Lastly, um, the students wanted to actually help Fulton Fresh. They wanted to know how they could help, and um, they are thinking about ways that they could raise money to donate to us. We are so very, very excited about this. Um, not only are they learning about food deserts, but they're trying to create a solution as well. Wow, those kids are amazing. Thank you, Minya, for sharing that story, and thank you for watching. And remember, you can connect with us right here on FGTV Online on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us anytime on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.